So, uh, today I will be talking about some tools. Uh, tools are things that uh, people tend to use from the early ages to the most modern power tools and like it's something that's been in the history of man mankind for, for the whole time. Um, and wh why do people tend to use tools? Uh, it's mainly because they are faster, it's easier to do some tasks with it because like you cannot change a tire in a car without some tool and uh, most importantly it could be automated and it doesn't make mistakes like if you have a wrench it will not do mistake but somebody who does it with hand they can screw up and but these are like pretty good things to have but what are the downside of tools uh, first of all you need to find them, you need to make them, you need to uh, spend some time configuring it and for some complicated tools it could be pretty long time. Uh, after, after you have them uh, you need to learn how to use them properly because uh, what use does a tool have if you don't know how to use it? Uh, and the, the third thing is that you still need to take care of them. You need to make sure that they are in perfect shape uh, you need to make sure that they are usable and that takes some time as well. Uh, but most importantly, uh, if you're using the wrong tool, it could be really just worse than using none. Uh, and that's, that's the worst thing about tools. Uh, but today I'm not going to be talking about any drills or, or other, other tools like that. I will be talking about <coughs> development tools and more especially web development tools. And more I will be talking about myself. Uh, this is a little bit selfish talk, but you will get used to it. Uh, speaking of myself, my name is David. I'm 21 years old. I'm working in PHP for the last four years. Uh, it's my first time here in Poland on some conference, and I'm having a talk. It's my fourth talk ever, so please be kind. <laughs> and uh, speaking of me, uh, let's just go, go through it. Uh, so this is just some list of the tools that I use and I use them every day and I tend to love them more and more because they save me, save me a lot of time. The first and obvious one is the IDE. Uh, as a programmer, you, I use it every day. Everyone uses it every day and it's, it's great to, to have it uh, for your advantage. And for the IDE, I couldn't include anything else than PHP Storm. Uh, I will do a little bit of a quiz. Uh, I will ask if you use some tools and I would be glad if you could raise a hand if you use it. So who uses PHP Storm? <laughs> most, most of the people. Most of the people. Okay. Uh, so PHP Storm, you already know what it is. Uh, you already know that it saves a lot of time because you can do some complicated refactorings with it. You can replace whole chunks of code if you need to. Uh, it can help you. The navigation is awesome. It could be really quick and everything. It has a lot of plugins. Uh, me personally, because I work with Symfony, the Symfony plugin is priceless. It's like just really, really great. Uh, it has a lot of uh, things to, that it can integrate with. Uh, the first thing is the integration with Git because you can commit and you can do everything that you can do in a command line with Git in PHP Storm uh, and it's graphic so you can see a bit more than in command line. Speaking of command line, uh, you have the interface for command line in PHP Storm as well so you don't need to change panels or everything. And just it has a, such a such a high customization with all the new updates and all the things that you can you can change so it suits you. It's just like really really great tool. Uh, the second things that I have here are the the coding coding standards and automated tests. I didn't have these slides in until yesterday, but I said that I should add them in because it's a thing that I use every day and it just saves so much time and it uh, makes the application much more secure and speaking of coding standards I'm gonna the, the one thing that came into my mind was PHP stan so who uses PHP stan quite a few hands okay 
so PHP Stan is a it's, it's a tool for uh, static analysis of the code. Uh, it uh, it can find a lot of errors uh, before you even like de deploy the application, and it does it without running the code. Uh, it really suits up a lot of projects because you have a lot of extensions for PHP Stan, so you can have extensions for Symfony and its magic, or for, uh, let's say, Laravel or Mockery, if you use Mockery in your, in your tests. Uh, the second thing that I, that I have is HTTP smoke tests. Uh, who uses or knows HTTP smoke tests, by the way? Yeah. Nice, one guy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be talking about, well, our version. Uh, it's a bundle for Symfony. Uh, it really saves up time because after you uh, add it to your Symfony, it automatically makes requests to all your routes or URLs and checks if the response code of the, of the route is, is correct. By default, it's 200, but you can change it if you need to. Uh, it's a really great tool because uh, sometimes when you're working on some older application, you don't know if you make a change, if it will not break something else. And this one just covers you because it checks all the pages. It's really quick. Uh, the integration could be done in a few minutes. And yeah, uh, as I have in my slide, uh, you can test the routes with parameters as well. So if you need to go to you know, like a product with ID5, uh, the HTTP smoke tests can test uh, basically the same thing. They just make requests with some parameter. By default, it tries it with one if it's ID. So that's pretty useful. You don't need to do anything. It does a lot of work for you. Uh, moving on, because when you have coding standards and your tests, you don't want to be like always running them on your computer because it takes a lot. Sometimes it could take a lot of time and don't really want to do that. So you can use the CI or, or CD. Uh, who uses like continuous integration or continuous delivery tools? That's a huge amount of people. I'm glad to see that. Uh, and speaking of CIs, uh, why should we use it? That's pretty obvious. It just automates everything that you would do personally on your machine. Uh, it's really great that you can uh, chain up the task. So if you have, if you want to check your master for uh, free PHP versions, you want to check it with different configuration or something like that, you can chain up the build of your master with your other builds of master with different configuration, and it just works like a charm. It really saves a lot of time, so you don't need to check it on your computer every time. Uh, you just push uh, push your branch or push a tag. It will. Uh, it will do its magic. Uh, so, and speaking of CI, uh, the first thing is definitely Jenkins for me. Uh, who uses Jenkins? Nice. Uh, it's free and open source. Uh, it's used for automation of most of the most of the things. You can set up set it up that it builds every branch or every tag of your repository. Uh, it could be set up that it could. Uh, you can build from multiple repositories as well, so you can have one Jenkins for more repositories. And it's really useful because you can configure it so that it creates the, an instance of the application running with some unique uh, URL. Uh, so you can send it to your tester for manual testing, or you can send it to your product owner for some business validation. And uh, as I said earlier, you can chain all the actions just with like almost every other CI. Uh, the second CI that I'm going to talk about is Travis. Who uses Travis? Nice. Uh, it's <coughs> basically the same thing. You can automate the testing or deployment of your application with uh, different configurations on different, uh, different platforms and so on. Uh, for me personally, why I love it so much is because uh, it's free uh, if you have a public open source project. And the integration with GitHub is just really great. Uh, you can see if the checks are if the checks are complete on GitHub, you have a little tick or cross. If it doesn't, and the great thing about about this with open source is that uh, the people who make a pull request 
they don't necessarily know what uh, what they should run, like that they should run uh, tests, that they should run standards and so on. And Travis is just great because it, it tells them like this is wrong, this is this is not how we do it. So that's just really great. Uh, moving on with GitHub, this one of the basics. Everybody uses it, but every time I think about it, I just love it so much, like using Git and GitHub. So who uses Git? <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. And who uses uh, GitHub? That's a lot of people as well. OK. So GitHub, everybody knows it is a repository hosting service. It's really great for managing open source project because you can plan your releases, you can plan your issues, your pull requests, you can do a lot of work, you can most of the thing that you would have in like Jira or Yodis, you can just move to GitHub and make it open source so the, the community can see what you will be doing and when they can expect stuff. And uh, as I was mentioning before, the integration with other services is great as well. Uh, if you need to integrate it with Travis, it's, it's like two clicks. Uh, you can integrate it, your application with Sonar Cloud, so it checks the pull request, so it checks your application, and it shows up everywhere, and it's just so much, so much more visible, and looks looks good if you can say that your pull request checks on Travis. Uh, moving on, uh, if you like have your application somewhere, uh, you want to know if it like is usable. Like, you know, it doesn't have any errors because you have the tests and standards. But like, is it usable? Is it even fast? So that's where performance testing come handy. And for performance testing, the the tool that I chose was uh, Gatlink. Who uses Gatlink? Who knows Gatlink? Few people. Uh, so. Gatling is uh, just a tool for automated load testing of uh, web pages. You just put, uh, you create a, a scenario, uh, put your URL addresses that you uh, want to want to check, and it makes requests at the URL and uh, re returns the the response types of the pages that you that you need. Uh, you can fake it so that it well you can configure it so that it uh, can well shoot multiple requests at a time so you can know like if uh, there will be 100 users at once on on these pages or in your application you know how how long it will take to to load all the pages and the greatest thing about getlang is that the the output of it is a simple HT, html page uh, it's really it's good, good looking for human and it could be uh, really easy to uh, be readable by a machine as well. So the output is great as well. Uh, moving on, we have Elasticsearch. This is one of the tools which I didn't know if I should include, but I just, it's one of my biggest, biggest loves. And who uses Elasticsearch? Forgot to ask. A lot of people, it's great. Um, Elasticsearch is just a search and analytic engine. It's really great because the searching is fast. You can uh, move a lot of logic if you have on, uh, let's say, uh, some e-commerce site. You can move the filtering there, ordering and everything, so it will be much faster. Uh, the full text searching could be customized for your needs or for the needs of your customers, which is good as well. Uh, it could be it's, it's scalable by design. You just if you need need it faster for some way, or you have a big uh, with a lot of customers, uh, you just push it to to a cluster, uh, make make some nodes, and yeah, you have it. And generally, like for a really low effort to include Elasticsearch into your application, the payoff is huge. Like even if you don't do any any like magic with the with the full full text searching uh, just the speed itself it's great and yeah i have one more one more tool which is actually uh, the, the the coffee machine is the, the greatest example of a tool and of all the pros and of all the the minuses the the cons because 
if you're using a coffee machine, the the work is faster. Like if you if you would do it by hand, you would need to grind up the beans and do all this kind of work. The coffee machine does it. Uh, it's easier because you just click on one button, it makes you a coffee. Uh, it uh, takes away the human factor because if you're doing a coffee by hand, you don't know the, the exact amount of coffee that you should put for an espresso. And you don't know the, the, the pressure that needs to be there. But it's a really great example of the, of the cons as well, because anybody who had uh, automated coffee machine know that these things tend to break a lot. So you need to t take care of it. Uh, if you want to purchase one, it, they are actually quite as expensive as well. And when, when you take it home and you want to make like a normal coffee for your little cute mugs, you need to know like which button to press. You need to learn how you can change it so that it does uh, le well 10 milliliters less so it fits in your cup. And yeah, just a great, great example. So, uh, oh, that was faster than I thought. Uh, so, let's go to some summary. Just the three points which I would love if you could take away from this. So it's not just my selfish talking about the things that I use and I love. Uh, after you find a tool that really suits the things that you do, uh, it becomes priceless to you. And I mean it that uh, if, if somebody tells you, like, you know, this tool is stupid, and why do you even use it, but it really suits you uh, with all the ways, just, just ignore him and use it, because, you know, it makes your life really, really easier. Uh, and with, with the finding, as I, as I said, it could be a little difficult task, and I have it, had it as a con that you need to find it, but finding new tools can be, it can cost a lot of money, <coughs> like even, Let's say if I would want to use some new CI, it just like th there's a lot of options for CIs and you need to compare them. It just takes a lot of time, but after you get the the best one for your needs, it can really really pay off. And the last one, I'm just repeating myself here, is using the wrong tool can be worse than using none, because if you use something something bad, it like it. For for instance, like automated tests, if you if you have your automated tests which are wrong, they will take uh, seven times more time than if you would do it without automated tests, and you would need to change them every time. So that's that. That was it. it was kind of faster than I thought. I think I forgot to say like 30 things. Uh, but thank you for your attention. I'm glad to be here, and let's hear your questions or some tools that you use, which you think I should know. So, does anybody have a question? I was told that I should throw it, but I'm kind of scared. Who wants the, who wants the box? No one, nobody has any question. Oh, that's sad. Okay, so. Maybe we can end if I mean, anybody, nobody has any question. <sighs> okay then, so thank you very much. Thank you.